If you want to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page to gain access to exclusive videos, take part in Q&As, and watch my retrospectives before they go live on YouTube. So after much petitioning, complaining, screaming, shouting and pleading, the fans of Zack Snyder's DC Universe were finally given what they've all been begging for, his cut of Justice League. Warner Brothers, in their attempts to boost subscribers to their streaming service HBO Max, invested $70 million to allow Zack to recut the movie and add additional scenes to his epic team-up movie. As it's all common knowledge now, Zack Snyder left the Justice League production due to a family death and Warner Brothers were panicking at the time due to the creative decisions the director was taking their DC comic characters. The bad press surrounding Batman v Superman made the studio panic. With Zack out of the picture, they brought in Joss Whedon, who made the Avengers a big success to finish the film. But he had a difficult task ahead of him, as Warner Brothers gave him a strict two-hour runtime to meet. Plus, they wanted to lighten up the movie with additional humour and change the tone to make it feel more in line with Marvel in their attempts to appeal to family audiences. But producing a Justice League movie so early into this new series of DC movies was always going to be troublesome, as many of the characters featured had not received any standalone movies to really develop their backstories. So, introducing all these characters into a two hour runtime was going to be an uphill struggle and it was a clear cash grab by Warner Brothers to rush this Avengers-style movie into production. What we got was a heavily compromised movie that felt incoherent, poor character development outside of Batman and Superman, strange colour grading in their attempts to make the film more colourful and eye-catching, CGI covering up Henry Cavill's moustache for his reshoots, and we got a redesigned villain whose motives were poorly explained. So it was a complete mess that made little money for the studio due to their huge investment and reshoots. Fans knew there was tons of footage missing. The trailers and behind the scenes footage showed there was large chunks of material not used. And this started the hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Over the years, there's been extended cuts of movies or say director's cuts. As a film lover, I'm always intrigued to see alternative cuts of films. Back in 2006, a similar situation occurred with fans petitioning for a number of years for the extended cut of Richard Donner's Superman 2. Although less money was spent on Warner Brothers' behalf, they gave the fans what they wanted so they could finally see what Donna had intended for the sequel, especially the material with Marlon Brando. The new cut of Superman 2 was a success. So come Zack's version of Justice League, is it an improvement over the theatrical cut? Well, yes it is. To my surprise, I really enjoyed it, but it does come with its own set of problems. Obviously, the first thing that's on most people's minds is the runtime at four hours long a similar length to the extended cut of The Return of the King. In the case of Lord of the Rings, that runtime is kind of justified as the book is massive, but Justice League, its runtime is unnecessary. But I didn't feel the movie was a slog or difficult to get through. There was clearly many scenes that could have been trimmed, however. A reduction in slow motion, which is a typical trait Snyder likes to deploy, and scenes with people just standing there posing. There's a lot of posing throughout, which could have been dropped. With its story, it's far more coherent. It's still the same plot as the theatrical cut, but just has far more meat on the bones. Originally, it was a forgettable run-of-the-mill action adventure, with the Batman bringing the team together to fight a bad guy who yet again wants to terraform the planet. This time, that forgettable plot has become far more interesting. It does ultimately feel like a different film. Steppenwolf is far more menacing and a villain who has a strong motive to do what he needs to do to please his master Darkseid. He doesn't feel like a generic bad guy who is doing his master's bidding. There's a lot more at stake here for his character to complete his mission. His design is far more interesting and threatening than what they produced for the theatrical cut, which looked like a crappy Dungeons and Dragons character. Even though his body armour looks like an expensive cheese grater, he feels more of a threat to the Justice League. What surprised me the most was the character development of The Flash and in particular Cyborg. He has become an important character to the League and integral to stopping Steppenwolf. He was completely thrown under the bus in the theatrical cut, but here I feel he is the heart of the story. Zack has never really managed to convey strong emotional themes in his films for me personally, but he really nails Cyborg with his relationship with his father. The Flash has a great introduction, saving a woman at the last second, though the magical moment is slightly undone while he grabs a sausage. To finish what you could say is the punchline to his character's setup, but it worked a treat. 
I loved seeing more play between Alfred and Bruce. I really liked Jeremy Irons' version of the famous butler, so having extra screen time with them was a plus for me. Wonder Woman is there to explain what the hell is going on with the history of the Mother Boxes and their relationship to Darkseid and the history of Earth. The film does deploy a lot of the traditional exposition dumps, sadly, with many scenes featuring the famous heroes just standing around passing out information, which isn't super exciting to watch, but now we, the audience, are far more informed and for the most part feel invested in what will become the final battle to save the planet Earth. As a big fan of Superman, he oddly gets less screen time in this version. Josh Whedon clearly was a fan as well, and included more scenes to make Henry Cavill's interpretation of the character feel more like his comic book counterpart, smiling and just being a happy chap. In Zack's version, he has less dialogue and now wears the infamous black costume to please the fans. I never understood people's fascination with his black outfit. He wore it once in the comics, right? He came back from the dead and wore this regeneration suit, as he was still weak. That's it as far as I'm concerned. Superheroes who wear dark outfits usually wear them to hide in the shadows. But that isn't Superman, he doesn't need to hide. When Superman comes back, there is a lovely moment as we hear the voices of jor and Jonathan Kent as he takes off to join the team. It would have felt more thrilling to me personally if he was in the classic costume. With a new scene of Bruce having a nightmare of the future, we see Superman in his traditional outfit. Surely if Kal-El is evil, he would be in the black outfit, right? Anyway, small complaint which I think is justified. I think what has surprised the general public is the 4x3 aspect ratio, or the 133 to 1 look. I saw countless people on my Facebook feed complaining what's wrong with the picture. As Zack became obsessed with the IMAX format during post-production on Batman v Superman, he wanted Justice League to have that IMAX aspect ratio, with more vertical height. With Justice League not actually being shot on IMAX cameras, he shot it on Super 35mm film, which allowed him to achieve the image he wanted. At first it did honestly bug me, but I got used to it pretty quickly, and didn't care after a while, and you could argue this 4x3 frame makes it resemble the panels of a comic book. Zack does have a fantastic eye to capture great visuals, and the film has many moments of really impressive photography, but I'm not keen on the sepia look the film goes with. It just looks a bit grey and dour in areas, feeling less like a comic book movie. The theatrical cut had Danny Elfman providing the score, and he littered the movie with callbacks to his Batman theme and even John Williams' Superman theme, which as a fan of those films, it did please me. But to be fair, they did feel out of place, because the previous films had different themes and a totally different musical approach so changing the music did mess with continuity. So with this new version, composer Junkie XL, aka Tom Holkenberg, has provided a whole new score, which is pretty good and does the job. There are musical cues and themes deployed that are certainly more uplifting than anything he did on Batman v Superman, which I felt was a really bad score, loud and noisy. It was an attack on your ears. This is totally refreshing and a major improvement, though some of the contemporary songs Snyder has included are very hit and miss. The complete soundtrack to this new cut is now available on iTunes. There has been some complaints of the CGI and scenes that have been touched up to fit this new cut. I didn't personally see anything that was bad and stood out that took me out of the picture. I think the majority of the effects were pretty consistent, though there was one CGI character, who I won't show, that did need more work done. Steppenwolf looked really good and time has been spent to make him look as believable as possible, but the film is heavy on the computer effects with little in-camera practical effects or even miniatures. If you are a fan of Zack Snyder's vision for these characters, you will love this movie no matter what anyone says, but it is too long. It does have pacing issues and feels like everything that Zack shot is in the film. It ends up feeling like a well-polished assembly cut. If Zack never left the production and got to finish the film at the time, there is no way it would have been four hours. I'm guessing a suitable two hours and 30 minutes perhaps. So it would have still been somewhat compromised. I know there was talk of splitting it into two movies, but I don't see this storyline being successfully split into two films. This four hour length won't be for everyone, especially kids, who will get very fidgety and probably tune out. And four hours is a big ask for someone to spend their afternoon or evening watching a film. For me, I don't see myself rushing to sit through it all again anytime soon, but maybe in a year's time I will happily make the effort. I think it's great Zack got to complete his vision. I'm always happy to see alternative cuts of movies. I think we need to support the hashtag release the fury cut so we can finally see the complete version of Superman 4. More footage of the real Superman Christopher Reeve is a must for me. 
I don't think this new cut of Justice League will persuade Warners to return to what Zack had wanted for these characters. Things have changed and moved on since his departure, but it's an interesting window into what could have been. I'm surprised I liked it more than I thought I would. Weirdly, I think between Man of Steel, Batman v Superman and Justice League, Justice League is probably the best movie he directed for this DC Universe, but saying that, it's still not the direction I would have taken these characters, but it was an honourable effort nonetheless. You need to show them who you are. Love them come. The way we loved you. Fly, son. It's time.